All right, we're in the dark room. And that's why it's called the dark room, because it's dark. Which I know really goes without saying. But, at any rate, uh, for the purposes of getting this going, uh, I'm going to show you what I'm going to do, and then I'm going to actually do it and come back in just a second while I print this. I'm going to do a contact print, and what that means is taking a single sheet of photo paper, and this is old photo paper, so I'm hoping it'll be an okay anal analog, putting the negatives on top of it, printing it, and then developing it, and going from there. And um, seeing which of my prints are going to be the best, because it's easier to evaluate the positives than it is to evaluate the negatives. So with a traditional contact print, you want to use a contact printer, which is putting weight on this to keep things flat. This is just evaluative, so I'm going to do it for 30 seconds, which I should have started counting. So let's see. Uh, damn. Okay, so 30 seconds was way too long. I'm doing this one for four. Let's see how that works. All right, four seconds was way too long, so I'm going to try it now again at four seconds, but with the enlarging lens stopped down to about f8. There we go, that's better. So we're back, and I've got uh, the dark cloth down here, and what I'm going to do is this is one of my test pieces of glass, but I'll put the 6x6 six six glass here, I'll put the negative in the negative carrier, and then I'll print the image. I have to put the emulsion on the glass first. The emulsion's liquefying right now. Uh, it's, it's still in a light, light tight bottle. And then what I'll do is I'll pour it in here and pour it on the glass and let it go. I've picked out the photos I'm going to print, and what I did was I took the plastic sheet and I marked a little mark next to the negative on the plastic sheet, not on the negative, obviously. And now I just have to take those out, put them in the negative carrier, oops, put them in the negative carrier, and we're good to go for our printing. Next thing you're going to see are going to be some finished results. Okay, so this is one of those very rare, I'm up early enough in the morning to do one of these, but uh, so printing these seven opalotypes last night took almost five hours in the dark room. It was a uh, very exhausting evening. And here are the finished results. And they vary wildly. So there are some interesting uh, interesting flaws in some of them. I'll take uh, this one right up here. And uh, some of them have the uh, the fixer did not completely fix the emulsion and the um, rinse. Now I fixed these for about 10 minutes each. Uh, the, emul the wash then, which for some of these was half an hour, did not completely take off some of the unfixed emulsion. So a few of them have some purple spots. Uh, and then uh, where the emulsion was extra thick. And then in this one is also interesting because in the, wa in the wash, even though it was very gentle, the emulsion tore. Now that it's dry, it's, it's solid, but the emulsion tore during the washing process. Uh, this, this was a test strip. Uh, this was a bad idea. I just did a single bead down the middle to try and conserve my emulsion. Didn't work as a test strip. I couldn't tell what I was looking at. Um, here's, here's one that turned out fairly fairly okay. You can see that there's some of the emulsion tearing and some of the discoloration here. But uh, also there's um, a lot of bubbles through it. And the bubbles were because I dropped the emulsion bottle and it got shaken up in, that pro in the drop. And so a lot of bubbles got into the emulsion and didn't, um, didn't come out of this as the emulsion was setting before development. So these are the finished results. They really look really, really good. It it's, uh, might not be translating exactly over the, over film, over the camera, 
but they have a nice warm tone to them. They're, the image is translucent. You can almost see through it, but not quite. And uh, the, the finished result is really very, very attractive. Very homemade. <laughs> they clearly look homemade, and in that way, somewhat retro-ish. But uh, by and large, I'm, I'm pretty happy with these results. So, if, these, if this video and this series of videos about making opalotypes was helpful to you, please give me a thumbs up. That lets me know I'm on the right track. If you'd like to subscribe, uh, uh, please do so. And you'll know when I have more, uh, more videos that I release. Also, uh, if you have any questions or comments, please leave those in the comments section below, and I'll respond to those when I can. I try to be pretty good about that. If you have any suggestions for future videos, please send those over. If I have the technical know-how and the uh, equipment, I'm more than happy to make those. And the last thing, thank you guys for watching.